And you are tuned to the most listened to radio talk show in America for over 26 busy broadcast years. Great to have you with us, my friends. Rush Limbaugh, brand new week of broadcast excellence, and this is a big week. On Friday, the 25th annual Radiothon that we do here to cure the blood cancers, leukemia and lymphoma. That's coming up on Friday, our 25th annual, a quarter of a century. Anyway, folks, great to have you here. Telephone number is 800-282-2882 and the email address, lrushbow at eibnet.com. I hope everybody had a great Easter. Did you guys uh, have a great Easter in there? Went to St. Louis to uh, have Easter with the with the family. Went to St. Louis. Uh, and and the St. Louis Club, this place, the St. Louis Club's actually in Clayton, and this place is so exclusive. To be a member, you have to be born there. I think the operating room's on the fifteenth floor. I mean, that's that's exclusive. Anyway, we had uh, many family members gather there. It was just a just a great time, and and I tell you, folks, it's uh, it. it Family is such an important thing, and it's a great thing to be able to get together with people uh, that you don't see regularly. And I hope you've had that opportunity at some point uh, in the past couple of months since Christmas and so forth, because it really, really is uh, one of the most re it's restorative, or restorative uh, in, in my case. And speaking of restorative, uh, Man, the news have did you see eight hundred forty two thousand dollars raised for memories pizza at gofund.com or gofundme.com. Have you heard? Have you heard this honestly? This is I mean, it's not a joke. The left is actually claiming now that the O'Connor family set this up, that this was a scam from the get go, that they were about to go out of business. That it's a little pizza joint in a small town, and they arranged for this whole episode to take place, hoping to entice somebody from the media to come in and do a story ripping them to shreds as racist bigots and homophobes so that they could then raise $842,000 via the Internet. That the, Honestly. Honestly, there are serious leftists. And by serious, I mean, well, they're all kooks and crackpots, but I mean, these are named byline type people who are making this allegation that the whole thing was a see it, it cannot be legitimate and then there are others on the left who are saying that the very idea that a bunch of christians banded together to donate eight hundred and forty two thousand dollars is all the proof you need that there is racism and bigotry and homophobia and they were circle the wagon wagons to protect one another but nevertheless eight hundred and uh, and 42 grand there. Half my brain time behind my back just to keep it fair. Rush Limbaugh having more fun than a human being should be allowed to have it. A reason for that is that I am doing what I was born to do. I got lucky and found out at age eight what I wanted to do. And I'm doing it. And I have been for years. It's great. 800-282-2882 if you want to be on the program. Back to this $842,000 raised for the family of uh, Memories Pizza that came under fire, under assault, after the Infobabe reporter at from Channel 57, ABC Eyeball News 57 South Bend, Indiana, went bigot shopping and found one inside the store. You know, if this, and I'm not kidding, by the way, the left has people out there claiming this whole thing was a hoax, the whole thing was a setup from the get-go by trickery-oriented right-wingers who knew exactly what to do here. Go out and fake the whole circumstance. You know, get a reporter, somehow arrange for a reporter to come into the pizzeria and arrange for the reporter to ask if you would cater a gay wedding and then predetermine your answer is no, no way, controversy born because your business is about to go under, you need money fast, Best way to do it, make it look like you're under siege by the American left and people will rally to you. They think this was a whole concocted event. The media, not even curious about this. They're reporting it, but that's about it. They report it in two or three paragraphs and they move on. 
Now, if circumstances were reversed, if, for example, this pizzeria happened to have been owned by a bunch of leftists, a bunch of liberals and Democrats, and if something had happened that threatened the livelihood of the business and the owners, and if a bunch of leftist donors came to the rescue and in a matter of two days raised over $840,000, do you know what the media would be doing? They'd be trying to find as many of these donors as possible to do profiles of them. What great people they are. Who are these people? Who are these invisible Americans who came to the rescue when an innocent little mom-and-pop Democrat business came under siege by vicious right-wingers? And they'd be out there doing stories. The Democrats on Capitol Hill would bring these people up to congressional hearings and make stars out of them. Great Americans who gave everything they could in some cases, only a dollar. But they gave it to the cause to save the left-wing business. And they would all be heroes. And everybody would know, and Obama would invite a couple of them to the next State of the Union show. But since it's in reverse, the media is doing its best to cover it perfunctorily in a couple, three paragraphs, and then moving on and letting it go. But they are privately fuming. They are seething over this because, once again, the evidence, the facts, which often elude them, have come to demonstrate that they have a long way to go to be able to put the population of this country under their boot. People responded, it was almost, uh, what did I say, 26 or 27,000 people an average donation of just under $30 that got it to the $842,000 limit. And greetings and welcome back. Rush Limbaugh, the cutting edge of societal evolution. By the way, and we're getting to phone calls here in just a second, uh, it's not just Memories Pizza. There's another one out, another GoFundMe.com beneficiary that you may not have heard about if this kind of thing fascinates you, you may have. Um, the Seattle Times reporting on April 4th. They were not happy. Amid Indiana controversy, donations soar for Washington florist who refused gay wedding. Now, this is different. In the Memories Pizza case, we had a hypothetical. We had an info babe that was going door to door shopping for bigotry. She left her home base at Channel 57 in South... Channel 57. I cannot believe that we still have Channel 57s in the... But anyway, she leaves. She goes 20 miles south of South Bend, knocking on doors, looking for a bigot anywhere. Just give me a bigot for the nightly news, she says. She can't find any. She's in Indiana. She finally walks into Memories Pizza. Would you serve a gay wedding? No, we would not. Our religion says... All right! And the info babe had her story, and there's bigotry at Memories Pizza. It's a hypothetical. In the state of Washington, this is a Richland florist who actually refused to provide flowers to a gay couple for their wedding. And this florist has uh, so far uh, received $80,000 from an online crowdfunding page dedicated to protect her and her livelihood is a GoFundMe.com page set up for Baronel Stutzman, who is the owner of Arlene's Flowers. She had raised about $80,225 from 1,800 donors by 7.30 p.m. Saturday. The page, but the page was set up in February, a um, long time ago. Well, a couple months ago. Set up in February, nearly half the money has been donated in the past 24 hours. Supporters likened the benefit page to one set up for Memories Pizza. But, but the difference is that Stutzman actually refused an actual request to provide arrangements for an actual gay wedding. Now, Baronel Stutzman was fined $1,000 plus $1 for court costs and fees in late March for refusing to serve a gay couple when they tried to buy wedding flowers in 2013. 
and Stutzman is 70 years old. She said that one of the men who wanted the flowers was her friend. And she would continue to provide flowers for other occasions. Providing flowers for his marriage went against her beliefs as a Southern Baptist. So there's all kinds of these things out there. There was one for a a woman whose shop was burned down in a rioting in Ferguson. And the same kind of thing happened. Americans rallied to her cause. She had nothing to do with the protest. She was just an innocent victim in the store of her dreams. She'd scrimped and saved everything. This little arts and crafts store burned down in the riots. It's been rebuilt or in the process of it. Thanks to uh, donations from people she never even knew, never even met, never thought she would ever come into contact with.